Hello and welcome to the video. In this one we're going to kind of document or show you guys the painting process for a collaboration or buddy build with Sean over at the Scale Model Car Guy channel. This also stems as part of a trade with him. He was looking for some of my custom paintwork. I'm always looking for some vintage goodies. So again, this was part of it. This one, it's kind of a one for him, one for me type of a deal. He's gonna get a custom paint job on a truck. I get a truck out of it. And of course I will put my custom paintwork on it as well. And since these trucks are the same, we're also gonna kind of do them as a collaboration or buddy build. So I'm gonna be doing some custom paintwork, but we're gonna do it kind of a, as a brother style. We're gonna do the same thing, but very up the colors a little bit so you can kind of see that they come from the same cloth but they are unique if you ever see them uh, separately from each other again that they are the same but different in themselves so what exactly are these pickups they are both annuals from either amt or smp i think they were coming out under both labels at the time kind of a transition period but they are the chevrolet apache pickups on the left is sean's which is a 1960 mine is on the right which is a 1961 so again the same but ever so slightly different just some slight differences in them again these are both annuals and not the newer tooling easy spotter guide is that bed uh, the annuals are a long bed with that sweet Apache trim down the side. The newer tooling, again, is kind of a smooth side, short bed. There's plenty of other differences, but that's a quick and easy spotter's guide for that. Both of these are essentially ready for primer. I've done all the prep and body work to them, uh, but I figured I'd show you guys before we get into the primer and paint to let you see what's kind of under the pretty stuff. Uh, both of these trucks were previously assembled, so they've got some glue scars that we had to tend to. Uh, the normal stuff like the flash and the mold lines, things like that, we got to take care of. Uh, did some body work. Uh, both of them had like big sink marks in the fenders, got those straightened out. Mine actually had a short shot of the back window. Uh, needed some cab repair from some old glue, kind of uh, softening that up. Again, just doing all that body work. We're going custom, so I kind of smooth up some body lines on the bed. Things like that, just getting these all prepped and now ready for paint. I don't know if I'll pop up any before photos, but if you want to see a before kind of collage of photos, check out my Facebook group. I put all of my kind of behind the scenes photos up into albums on my Facebook group so you can see all my projects, so any of the photos that I take along the way. So again, I'll pop up if anything kind of seems relevant while I'm showing it. But let's just uh, take a look at these guys, see where they're at, and we'll get into where they're going. So we'll just start at the front end with the hoods. Sean's over here. Again, these were all kind of painted beforehand. I tried stripping this off, but this is some very kind of uh, concreted paint on here. I tried multiple strippers, just wasn't budging. So we did all the sanding to get that smoothed out, prepped up. Again, all of the, the mold lines, seam lines has had a small crack here that we repaired but otherwise a pretty nice hood for his uh the 1960 normally has the apache trim here on the hood but it was so faint on these when i got them i tried foiling them and you just couldn't read them so we just kind of uh, smooth those off we are going custom anyways so no big deal to kind of clean up some emblems and make it look a little better my hood, on the other hand, is a much bigger problem. I spent the last uh, few months looking for parts for mine, and the hood being one big one, because, as you can see now, after I stripped all the paint off of it, it had a crack in it, which isn't that big of a deal, but the biggest part was this uh, marker light area was all kind of broke out. It was a very brittle hood. You know, I just started to repair it, but I've been looking for a hood replacement. Just can't seem to come up with one. I don't have any marker lights, so I don't know exactly how well I'm going to be able to repair this. We'll have to do something custom there. I need some other parts that I was looking for mine anyways, but uh, everything else is ready for primer. We'll have to kind of uh, get this hood cut up for primer unless I come up with uh, a hood magically in the next few days. But again, moving on. Uh, the dashes, nothing really much to speak of other than both of them had the steering column and steering wheel glued in. Both were just slightly crooked. Couldn't be having that. Again, my parts uh, were kind of brittle. I just looked at my steering wheel and it pretty much broke. So I drilled it out, found a drill bit, pretty much the same size as this uh, hole here, and just started drilling until the rest of the column kind of squirted out. 
and got it out pretty clean so we have to look for some parts again that's some of the parts i was looking for for mine sean's on the other hand was pretty well uh cleanly glued into place if you will it was only kind of glued in on the back side or maybe before they pushed it in so it's pretty lightly again just drilled it out from the back till the column come out all unscathed still got plenty of column to work with there so that's a good thing with his his is nice and clean there moving on to the cabs kind of the bigger work we had some big sink marks in the tops of the fenders i kind of think it's just a trademark of these pickups obviously on the firewall we got all the previous kind of glue scars from the brake or the heater things like that that we cleaned up there we had uh, mold lines running along here up along the the cab got that all cleaned up nice and smooth his cab is pretty nice and clean same with the bed really nice clean again all pretty much prepped out underside kind of gets all covered up his again was assembled had some bad tire burn you probably won't see that but i just went ahead filled it made it all smooth so we can kind of uh hide its history if you will in the future but again his his is pretty nice there mine on the other hand was a little rougher again we had kind of some glue scars in the front we got a bunch of glue scars from the grill area but i think that'll all cover up i just kind of glued it in to kind of give it some more uh, strength there it was getting pretty thin and brittle but i think we can cover that all up with some parts mine had some bad sink marks in the roof from you know the windows being glued in previously so we got those smoothed out there mine actually has uh the 61 has the trim on the fender versus the 60s kind of like clean so again just some subtle differences between the two again we talked about the short shot on the back window it was real short up here i don't know if you can tell that the, the new styrene we kind of had to rework that whole upper window area and you can see some of that work there but i think we got it cleaned up we'll have to see how she looks after primer i did mark them with an a when i got them initially before i kind of uh, memorized all of the trademark differences between the years but Again, cleaned up all of the mold lines here up on the cab. Again, I think we got her cleaned up pretty nicely now. Again, both beds looking good. Give you a look at everything before we go. Again, mine had big sink marks on the fender that we got cleaned up. You might be able to slightly see. I use sprue glue for a lot of my body work. That's what I used on mine, but I use super glue on Sean's. You know, I don't have any long term testing with the sprue glue as body work so i didn't want to do it uh the same on sean's i know super glue is pretty solid as far as being stable and not shrinking back but again i just kind of uh did a little different maybe years down the road we might see a difference but again i don't think i don't expect to but just one little note of difference between the two uh the beds might as well look at it sean's uh one thing i did was uh kind of smooth up the seam it's not really a body line on these it's just kind of a drop off where the real truck is kind of a separate panel so i just smooth that all in give us one clean uh body line or bedside down the back not much just cleaned up a lot of flash cleaned up the back end you can kind of see we've done just some brush on primer to get that all smoothed up and cleaned up on his his was pretty good again we have some uh a lot of focus issues here uh cleaned up all of the previous kind of glue marks there must have been bed rails or a tonneau cover on his we got that all smoothed up again ready for the main coat of primer i will probably foil all the chrome before we get into the primer and then clean that up as we go through the painting process hopefully have a nice clean line there to show off that apache trim mine same but different again we cleaned up that uh, bed seam back here mine had again like a tonneau cover on it cleaned up all the tops i'm sure i'll put a tonneau cover back over mine uh, my holes were pretty much glued in so i just kind of smooth those out we'll have to do again something custom there mine didn't come with any taillights so we'll come up with some custom work again all the flash and everything getting cleaned up 
in mine marked with the A, but just giving you a look. Pretty simple, but it was a lot of kind of tedious work getting these all cleaned up, making sure all the repairs were done. The body work that I was using is kind of a, a slow setting with the sprue glue and the super glue a little slower than some of the other fillers, but I think it's a kind of longer lasting in the long run, and that's what my goal is. So from now on, you're going to see these guys on primer, and we'll see you then. Alrighty, here we are after priming. Not much to go over, but we'll cover some things real quick. As you can see, I used the Mr. Hobby brand Mr. Finishing uh, Surfacer, the 1500 series. Although I did do some body work, I was confident in my body work and really just looking for a nice ground coat. And that's what the 1500 series is. It's just a nice uniform finish for us to work up off of. If you are looking for some more fill, there is like a 1000 and the 500 series. A little more body, a little more filling uh, capabilities with that. But again, it's good with my body work. So we're just using the 1500 to create a nice uniform ground layer. I do like the Mr. Hobby and Tamiya Lacquer Series primers. Again, it's a nice ground coat that pretty much anything can go over without incident. So let's just take a look at what we did use. I did use the black on the bed because it does have a wood grain texture. And that green is actually raised. So we'll put some brown over top of this. And we can kind of rub it down. And then all that green will kind of show up through the top. So we'll have a darker green through whatever wood color we use. I think I'll just leave it in the primer for Sean to decide what he wants to do. If he's got a better technique, by all means, go for it. I just decided to do them both the same. I will wood grain texture mine up, chrome strip it, and everything else. But I'll probably have a tonneau cover, so it might all be for naught. We will have a, maybe a light uh, color change with the fenders being black. But again, it's in the bed. It's 90 degree surfaces, so it's not going to stand out too much as far as the color differences. But we'll take a quick look around the body. As you can see, just a nice, smooth, clean finish. We had some body work on the firewall. And just going around the body, just really nice, smooth finish. Just blacked out everything, so there's no bare plastic showing once we do get into assemblies. Same with mine. Nothing, nothing too dramatically different. My roof came out. I had some repairs along there from the glass glue that back window came out really nice happy with that uh that short shot that we fixed again the bed and the wood grain blacked out just the same on the beds we had just that little bit of uh like filling of the bodywork to uh just make sure that that's all nice same with the bed rails and get this all to focus it's all nice and smooth appearing both are all the same again mine all smoothed out really clean i will sand these up with a thousand grit and get them ready for paint uh, i like a thousand grit it gives you a nice bite i will be doing some masking so i don't want to get too fine and have to worry about pull off you can see i still got some work to do on my uh repair there with my broken hood it doesn't look too bad but definitely needs some more work it may just end up with a bit of a lazy eye in the end but give you a look comparing the two it still needs some rounding off some finishing there but uh, we'll get her as best as we can and with that of course we got just the nice coat of primer on the dash get those painted up in body color as well and I'll get these wet sanded up, and we will see you with the color on.
And now we are back at the bench with all of the color on these trucks. Not the way that I had planned it, not even the way that I recorded it, but apparently uh, recording three or four uh, different videos at the same time. Uh, the last two segments must have got caught up with the other trash from editing videos, got lost somewhere along the way. So I've got a lot of ground to make up from the last video segment to where we're at now. I do have some photos, so we'll have to just use those to fill in the blanks. Obviously, no going back. Can't really redo these paint jobs at this point. We are nearing the finish, but again, we will just recap of what we did. Uh, we finished off with priming. We wet sanded with 1000 grit, and then after that, I decided to do bare metal foil under paint method. It was the first time I've ever done this, but I thought it would allow for a nice uh, kind of clean crisp uh, chrome lines things like that we'll talk more about how that turned out in a minute then we went into paint uh, i was thinking the ts45 was more opaque than it was but it wasn't so we had to start with the diamond dust that we were going to use for the roofs we just painted the entire trucks with a coat of the diamond dust give us a nice solid base color where there wasn't any burn throughs or anything like that that would show up under pearl coats a nice reflective base for that pearl to sit on and then we masked off the cabs because they are going to stay in the metallic silver then of course coated it with the ts45 till we got a nice clean white finish now we're sitting at just the white and silver point and now at this point, we started cleaning up again that uh, bare metal foil that we put on, getting that chrome cleaned up, trying to keep up with all the layers that we are going to put on these paint jobs. So getting the, the pearl white and even the silver off all of the chrome. Uh, again, some things that I learned about doing the bare metal foil under paint. Uh, you have to be pretty precise when doing that, especially with metallic stuff like that. You, you bump a color or something like that with the lacquer, you start uh, creating more mess than you are saving with your bare metal foil again more to talk about that in a minute then after we got all of the bare metal foil cleaned up time to start laying down some tape work uh, i already had the plans to do a watson style panels with some lace these trucks are actually a little more chopped up than i was expecting there's a lot more breaks i was hoping to add another color pinstripe around all these colors but as you can see we're getting pretty narrow the way it is trying to add another segment in there was going to kind of run out of time so we just went just the the white and the color uh for the colors i went with purple and we started off with the testers purplicious decanted a bit of this to do our outline work after all the masking you can kind of see the edge is that purplicious and then uh, for sean's we did the revving red from testers again extreme lacquer of course did the outline with his his has already been wet sanded for another clear coat so we're kind of stopped in between well, you see the little before and after there so after we did the outline and getting ready to lay the lace down course mask all of our lace up we did a variety of different laces here we've got one pattern down the side here we've got a pattern up here and another pattern up there I stayed with all kind of all circle type patterns with these but i wanted to have a nice variety uh, i didn't want to do it all in one pattern so we've got three different patterns on both of these trucks they are kind of identically matched again all brothers but a little bit different so now we've got the lace on and then we hit it hit mine with createx candy 2o deep purple i think i might have even touched this with a little more uh drop of red get a little more of that purple or tone it's almost pink here over top of that pearl white but it's still pretty good looking again very reminiscent of what uh, larry watson's earliest lace jobs were i'll try to pop up a picture of that i want to go with those kind of purple tones i don't know if they were really purple a lot of the old photographs have a, a funny chromatic with the reds and stuff like that but anyways i wanted to go with the purple we left something a little milder for sean i wasn't sure how much he would take on to like purples or pinks or anything like that so we just wanted the red so we're going to go with the revving red and then topped his with the createx blood red for his lace work it was a little closer in color, so you don't get the two-tone effect as much with his. His is more of just a solid red, but it still looks pretty good. 
Again, we got the three three patterns, all kind of circular patterns. We went with all a little bit different in design, but I think they all work well together. And then obviously the kind of the scallop work on the hood to break that up as well. So there we are. We've got the different colors of reds and purples and the candy colors. I guess we can show you the dashes. We did add a little bit of the the patterning to the dashes we have to get these cleared yet we got the the purple one here just a little bit of color to bring in to the inside after we do all of our clear work we got the first coat of clear done as you can see you get a lot of texture from the paint layers so now it's time to wet sand everything and here we are with sean's all wet sanded with 2000 grit nice and smooth so now our next top coat will just have a nice smooth glossy finish show you the back end we got that trimmed out one other thing to talk about is the bare metal foil you can kind of see that bare metal foil looks pretty good there one thing i did have going on there you can see it pretty well here on the truck it like was chipping off as i was cleaning it giving me kind of an uneven pattern look there so i was pretty bummed about that um i've used the createx before without an issue i know it's a little a little brittle especially running through the airbrush where you're not putting a lot of material down but i guess i wasn't expecting it to chip off uh, i didn't get a very clean edge on all of the chrome so i think we're gonna have to relay all of our bare metal foil uh, just kind of do it the normal way if you will and then go from there on the side trims just to clean up that edge just a little bit like it's not so bad again from the dead on it gives it a nice chrome look there but just certain angles you can kind of see it's a little rough rough around the edges i'm going to try to clean that up hopefully that all goes well we can get a top coat of clear on it and these will be ready to go again you can see with doing pattern work you get a little texture in your colors we've got the chrome there you can just kind of see it in different spots where the candy color kind of chipped off but uh again for the most part it was okay you just had to be careful you know touching any surfaces around that you're gonna disturb it but it worked out pretty well for our emblems things like that definitely a technique i will use in the future but i'll keep it to the smaller probably emblem type areas or solid colors where I don't have to worry about disturbing any kind of metallics along the way. But uh, I think these are gonna look pretty sharp. We did do the chrome vents there. We'll just have to use a Molotow or something like that to finish off our window trims. I was gonna bare metal foil that, but it's pretty small there. So I think just a, 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 a Molotow marker or silver marker or something like that to chrome those off and that'll be all pretty good. And we got the the chevy emblem chrome there as well nothing in the back end we could even fill in the nameplate if you wanted to not sure what i'm going to do there and all the detail work to come but now it's just time to bare metal foil sean's get mine wet sanded get that one bare metal foil get them cleared so that these can get sent out and i'll give you a final look here in the video and with that we'll kind of wrap this one up here in the next segment Alrighty guys, here we are into the final segment of this video, kind of wrapping up the paint portion of our collaboration and buddy build with Sean. Uh, we have more to go, obviously, figured that out for the future. I still need to locate some original components for mine. I need like the brake master cylinder and the hood inserts if not maybe we'll have to do something custom there but uh, hopefully i can track those down i'd like to have it all original as far as the parts go so we'll see what sean comes up with his and what i come up with mine for the future of the buddy build parts but back to this video regarding the paint uh last segment we were kind of in between the second clear coat having to kind of re bare metal foil so let's take a look at that over here we did redo that bare metal foil kind of more of traditionally how i would do it in between clear coats turned out really nice looks so much better in my opinion we got nice clean lines and edges none of that kind of rough chipping going on so again i thought that uh, foil under paint would work for trim not so much at least as far as with the 
that brittle createx so probably keep it to the script work from now on but as you can see the re-clearing turned out really nice absolutely clean finish looks really good we just touched a couple of dirt spots on the hood and otherwise that is just how it was sprayed turns out again my favorite way to do these as you can see some of that sparkle going on from the paint looks absolutely sharp a lot of these paint jobs you just can't appreciate them on camera as well as you can in person but hopefully you guys get a good taste of what is going on with these guys nice crisp looking paint hope sean's happy with this turned out pretty good in the end just a spin around his he'll have to figure out what he wants to do with his bed i will show you guys on mine kind of what i had in mine so otherwise not too much to look at uh we just have some black sprayed in the wheel wells stuff like that we went with just the solid silver as far as the interior of the cab goes he wants to change that it's all up to him it's all his after this moment we'll take a quick look at mine i did rush mine in between the clear coats and i didn't quite get it cut flat as much as i should as you can see there it's still got all the the ripple from the lace work so i'll probably have to recut mine and polish it or just recut it and clear it but otherwise most of it looks pretty good as far as the the paint there's a side you can see kind of the same sparkle and dance re-chromed or re-foiled mine for the chrome it turned out well uh it did work pretty well for the script work stands out pretty good to see that of course we did the foil work on the vents just the same same thing but different kind of uh twins in a way that's what i was going for in this one kind of a cool project to do these two together it turned out really nice i'm a big fan of purples and pinks i wasn't so sure what sean would think with something like that so we went kind of more traditional candy red on his with that that kind of wraps up the paint we'll take a quick look at the dash i'm sure he showed that off in his videos but again we just did a little bit of a fade give a little bit of that color into the interior as well so you'll see that through the dash i didn't paint any of the interior stuff left that all up to him again i just uh, did anything that was body color got that all painted and now it's all on him to figure out what he wants to do with his custom painted pickup again with the bed I'll give you a quick look of what i have in mind this is actually my first ever build back into the hobby and this is kind of the way i did it i thought it turned out pretty well see we have the raised grain in the black or darker colors and then topped it off with some craft paint um, we can obviously add to this now that we've got uh, a few more tricks up our sleeve but that's kind of what i had in mind with uh, priming those off in black you can accent that green because it is raised you can just kind of touch the tops and expose that green so that's what i had in mind by priming those black if sean wants to copy that i'll probably do a video on mine of the the technique i have it's not much to it more or less just finger painting with some craft paints at this point uh clean it up and probably put your chrome or white or whatever you want to do there or throw a tunnel cover on it and not worry about it at all so with that kind of wraps this up super excited to see these two done I'll see them next to each other for the last time i will take a bunch of photos as it will be likely the last time that they're ever seen together in one place other than here on youtube so with that i'll watch a little photo segment at the end i hope sean enjoys these and with that we'll see you next time